here's how you draw a sword quickly, edge up. break that down into slow motion. An edge up draw seems counterintuitive on paper because it seems like if you're drawing from down here and the edge is up, you'd have to draw, come up like this, and then slash down wasting time. However, in practice, that's not completely true. And here's how it's done. The end result that we're looking for actually isn't a downward slash, even though the edge is up. It's actually an outward slash. Now, the edge, of course, starts up like this. Now, I'm going to start course with the sword tucked up like this so it's in my belt. Now, you know, of course, you start out gripping the sword like this. Okay, so the wrist is a little bit bent like this. You're gripping it with your right palm facing outward. And of course, your left hand is ready to break the lock. So, first, the left thumb pushes the guard out of the uh, out of the side, of course. Then, there is a second motion also going on. All right, I'm going to come a little bit closer, and I'm going to show you what exactly happens in slow motion. So we're just going to pretend that this is at my waist like this, and I'm just going to do this with the camera. Okay, so the thumb pushes the guard out. At the same time, See how my left hand is? In a, in a second here, it's actually going to rotate the thing about 45 degrees in this direction like this. But not yet. All right. Now, as the blade comes out like this, watch what happens here. You see how it's turning? about 45 degrees this way. So it starts out like this, edge up. As the sword starts to unsheath, it twists this way. And there's, one, there's a third motion also going on to aid in the speed of the draw. And to give you an idea of why this third motion is absolutely necessary to prevent damage both to the blade and to the saya, I'll uh, pan back here. Okay, let's say I did just those two motions, and I'm trying to draw really quick. I would come out about this far so that the tip is just inside the, the saya here. All right, we're almost to the kasaki right here. If I continued the draw like this, the tip would come up like this. See that? Because if I let's say you know I uh, made the saya invisible and I just did it with the blade, this is what it would look like if you could see inside, like that. Okay, front, work, front ways. The blade is traveling in an outwards arc, of course, to prepare for that cut from the draw. Now, what happens if the saya is in the way? 
still at my my hip like this. Even though both the blade and the side are curved and that aids in the drawing motion a little bit, it's not quite enough. And what's going to happen is, right about here, the tip is actually going to drag along the interior of the saya, right at the right at the throat here. What's going to happen then is it's going to damage both the tip of the sword and it's also of course going to damage the inside of the saya. And if you do that enough times it's going to pose a safety risk because the blade is going to eat away at the inside of the saya. And eventually it could actually come through and uh, cut your hand. So the third motion that we're going to focus on when we cut from the draw is we're going to pull back like this with the scion. Now, if I were wearing a belt, this would still be possible because the belt would be about here. I would both pull the sword back, or, or the saya rather, as back as far as I could in the belt, and I would also pull my left hip back like this. Okay? So as I cut from the draw, I would also pull my hip back like this. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos where I cut from the draw, it may look a little scary because you see it from this angle, okay, whenever I'm filming, when I'm doing any cutting, the camera usually shows me at this angle. What you see when you see me cut from the draw is you see the sword start to make a rotation right here and it looks like it's cutting into the mouth of the side. But Actually, at that point, if we rotated the camera around like this, you would see that I've pulled the saya back like this. And that's precisely why. It's because it would damage the sword if I did it any other way. Now, <clears throat> back to the second motion where the saya is rotated. This is what makes this motion actually work in practice, even if it appears not to because you start with the edge up. When you rotate the sword slightly to the side like this, as I make that this drawing motion like this, we see the sword is like this. This already sets me up for a slash. I don't have to make any other secondary motions with the sword to set up for a slash. When I am right, when I am right here, I am already set up to make a slash like this. You see that? So in slow motion, as I pull the blade out, even though it appears edge up, it's slowly rotating like this. And by the time I'm finished drawing the blade here, all I have to do is slash across like that. So again, in normal speed, looks about like this. See that? And because I've moved the side of back, it doesn't cause any damage to the blade or to the side.